So this is a very brief video on the importance of colour design in film and this is particularly important for students who are making their own short films or their own um, uh, even working on their own shots for their um, demo reel. So obviously if you look at the colour wheel there are tons and tons, millions of potential colours. What we're primarily interested in with colour design is being selective about the colours that we use and in particular dividing up the warm and the cool colours. And as anyone who's been to art school or has had any acquaintance with a design course will know, the, the warm colours are over here on this side of the colour wheel and the cool colours mainly confined to the blues and greys over here on the other side. And which colours you choose is going to make a big difference to how your film feels. Um, so let's just go very quickly over the basic vocabulary of colour. So what is hue? Hue is what we think of as being the colours, red, yellow, blue, um, purple and so on. That's hue. Hue is just straightforward colour. Um, these are what we call the primary or pure spectrum colours, red, yellow and blue. Um, if you go to value, value is about the lightness and the darkness of the colour. So value is the lightness and darkness of the colour, the amount of black and white that we've added to it. Intensity is the uh, purity of the colour or the saturation, as people sometimes say, saturated colours. Saturated colours are very, very pure, sort of very cartoony style. Desaturated colours <coughs> are almost um, grey. So that's the colour basics. Hue, red, yellow and blue, value, the amount of black and white, intensity, the purity of the saturation and the, of the colour. So far, so good. So then we've got to think about the kinds of colour design. So there are basically three kinds, monochromatic, analogous and complementary. Um, so monochromatic is what it sounds like. You've basically got one crow, one, one colour, monochrome. Um, and there, only really the value, um, the lightness and the darkness uh, and, the, and the intensity are going to change. So here's an example of a monochromatic um, design of a bathroom, sort of pink, as some people like. Um, here's another monochromatic design. This is sort of a porch. Uh, maybe it could be New England or, or, or Canada, someplace where the light's not very strong. You've also got cool colours being used here, sort of blues and, and, and um, bluey greens. Analogous colour design is different. Here we're looking at, at um, colours which are similar in similar places on the colour wheel. In this case, we've got the yellow of these flowers alongside the blues of the plants here. So these, these, these um, colours are neighbours on the colour wheel. They get along, they're, they're harmonious or analogous. Um, contrasting with that is complementary colour design. So you'll see the, 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 the green of the background and the violet of the flower are on opposite sides of the colour wheel. Um, and these exhibit contrast. You'll also see it, you know, if you, if you see people with red hair, they often wear green because orange and green are on opposite sides of the colour wheel. So um, uh, you'll find complementary colour design in the way um, people with um, red hair or perhaps green eyes often uh, dress. Um, so warm colours versus cool colours. Um, warm is all over here, cool is all over there. So how does all this apply um, to making films because what we want to know is, is what the feeling of these colours is. So warm colours obviously you've got your kind of reds, oranges, yellows, blood, sun, fire, warmth, happiness, sunsets, friendly colours, these are nice colours. Cool colours on the other on the other side of the spectrum, blue, blue-green, blue-grey, cold, snowy, ice, this is the this is the depressing bit of the film, this is when it's raining, the end of, end of act, middle of act two, we think all is lost. Um, some colours recede, others advance. Which is which? Clearly warm colours advance, cool colours recede. It's always the purple mountains majesty or the blue ridge mountains. It's never the red mountains, right? Because all the reds get uh, washed out by the atmosphere and you're left with the cool colours in the spectrum. Um, in filmmaking, this is used to advantage. Here's a, here's a uh, section from uh, Toy Story 2. This is Chuckles the Clown. And, and here Chuckles is in his kind of contemporary, grumpy, cool colour mode and he's not feeling very happy about life. And then as he remembers his past, as he remembers his happy days um, in the nursery, um, we go into Chuckles' memory where he goes back when he was happy in the child's favour and then we go into warm colours. So you're basically going from cool colours, sad, to warm colours, happy. Um, uh, here's another example, this is from the Christmas Carol. 
um, uh, Uncle Scrooge is is cool, bloodless, cold, calculating. His nephew, warm, generous, um, full of life and vigor. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox, an entirely orange palleted uh, film. Even the sky is orange in this film because foxes are red, right? So they, that 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 informs the whole movie. Brown, warm earth colors. Um, contrast that with something like Nightmare Before Christmas. The characters are all bloodless. They're literally dead. All the colors been drained out of them. So they're blues and grays and, and cold colors. Um, Wally, no, film entirely without green. Um, Ralph Eggleston designed it. Um, uh, sent him an email saying, Ralph, you did a film with no green. And he said, oh, I'm so glad you noticed. And that's what production designers do. That's what they figure out. Um, Ridley Scott's Black Hawk Down. Here, Scott reverses the color convention. So um, usually good guys are warm colors, bad guys are cool colors. But here he flips it on its head. Somalia is warm brown, orange, and dusty. And the American HQ is kind of cool blue efficiency. Um, and here's another uh, Steven Soderbergh movie, Traffic. You'll see this done in movies all the time. Mexico, warm uh, earth colors. Meanwhile, in rural Virginia, it's all cool and bloodless, um, or, or a suburban of Virginia, um, drained of color. Um, Breaking Bad, they do the same thing. Um, New Mexico is um, shot like this at the top. Mexico is like this at the bottom. Anyone who's ever been to Mexico or New Mexico, uh, you'll know that both places look very, very similar, but they're shot differently so that we know where we are. Um, moving on, um, uh, color can be used as a warning. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan's film, uh, The Sixth Sense, great movie. Um, there is a color here that is used as a warning. Red is used as a warning. Anytime anything bad is going to happen, we see this big flash of red. So the red is used selectively through the film. Uh, to indicate that something really dreadful is about to happen. Who has a red doorknob on the door leading down to their basement? Not very many people. But in this movie, it, it's there. You won't notice it unless you watch the movie thinking about it because red is used selectively. So when we're thinking about animation, we want to think about our colors. And we, we uh, when I teach animation, we do this right from the start. You take a character like Monty, just a simple biped who we use for a walk cycle. You can make him sad by draining all the color out of him if you've given him a sad walk. Or feminine, if you want to kind of make him do a feminine walk. Uh, and when you're thinking about your demo reels, you want to be thinking about the kind of colors that you're going to use. Here we've got some nice, friendly um, kind of candy colors for Evgenia's animation demo reel. So that's a really quick jog through color theory and how it applies to movies. Um, when you're working on a film, you want to be thinking about color design and you want to be thinking about uh, color scripts, which is really a subject for another lecture. But you want to have these things in your mind because you don't want to use every color in the color wheel. R color design really is about taking colors out, like Ralph on, on um, uh, uh, he removed the color green in order to um, create a certain feeling for the movie overall. So that's the end of this talk on color theory in film.